Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. So spawning actors at runtime is a pretty common requirement for most games and we're going to be looking at doing that using the spawn actor function today. To get started I'll create a new actor class named spawn actor example and I'll place this in a folder named actors. Inside of the header file I'm just going to remove the tick function as we won't be using that and in its place I'll create a new private section. In here we're going to create a new variable using the t subclass of and passing in the type a actor, which I'll name actor to spawn. This will then allow us to choose any subclass of the actor type to spawn in the world. Just above this I'll place a u property and set this to edit anywhere and assign the meta specifier allow private access equals to true so that we can expose our private variable to the editor in Unreal. Then over in the code file we can start by removing the event tick function as we remove that in the header file and we're going to call our spawn actor function in the begin play function. So the first thing to know is that the spawn actor function is a member of the uworld class and to get this we can just call the get world function and then call the spawn actor function from here. We also need to make sure to assign the type of actor to spawn, which in our case will be the A actor type that we've assigned for the actor to spawn variable that we created just a moment earlier. We then have several different overrides available, but the minimum requirement is providing the actor to spawn, which will use our actor to spawn variable that we named. Then we need the location and the rotation to spawn it. So I'll create a constant F vector named location, which will be equal to get actor location which simply returns the location of our spawn actor example class. We'll then do something similar for the rotation. We'll create a const f rotator named rotation, which will be equal to the returned value of get actor rotation. Just using the const specifier here, as we know that the variables won't be changing type, we can then finish our spawn actor function call by providing the location and the rotation values. With that done, we just need to compile and return to the editor. And when that's ready to go, I'm just going to create a derived blueprint class from our new class named BP underscore spawn actor example. Inside of the blueprint, we can see we need something to pass into the actor to spawn variable that we've exposed. And for this example, I'm just going to create a purely blueprint based class of type actor named BP underscore spawnable. Inside of this, I'll replace the root component with a sphere mesh component and set the physics simulation to true. Back in the BP underscore spawn actor example class, we can now assign our new BP underscore spawnable class to the actor to spawn variable. Then in the editor, I'm just going to drag in a couple of our spawn actor example classes into the world and press simulate. And there we go, we can see that we now have, when the game starts, a couple of the BP underscore spawnable classes are being spawned into the world. The physics are simulating as we expected and they're dropping to the floor. So just a couple of things really to note about the process inside of the spawn actor example class, the C++ class, where we're using the actor to spawn as the type of A actor. We can see here that if we use the drop down option, we can choose from a large number of actors to spawn as it's basically anything that is of type A actor or derived from it. So ideally what you'd want to do is restrict this to a type that you've likely created yourself to limit the options available and also prevent the wrong type being assigned. As an example, if we were to place this inside of a weapon class, you might create a type of projectile class as well and you change the actor to spawn from an A actor to something like an A projectile base class. That would then ensure that the weapon can only fire projectiles and classes derived from that. And taking those extra precautions would just stop silly things happening like somebody accidentally maybe placing a prop class into the uh, the weapon fire and having you fire props around the room unless of course that's the kind of game you're going for but that's pretty much everything for this topic so as always if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful please do leave a like and share the video around that really helps be sure to subscribe for updates on the weekly tutorials and hit the notification bell to make sure that you get those updates as soon as the content goes live. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.